Awesome. Well, thank you guys for plugging in here on this Monday night. And um, I'm excited to share with you. We're going to continue our theme tonight um, of teaching cold market recruiting. You know, I, um, I am very quick to talk about warm market uh, recruiting, warm market building. And, um, you know, I talk to people about calling their warm market. I talk to people about, um, you know, uh, meeting people at gas stations. And, you know, I talk to people about kind of what I've learned to love. But here, here's what I know. And I'm going to laugh when I say this. But here's what I know. I know that a lot of that sucks, right? Like, I know that, that a lot of people just don't want to do that. And here's the good news. The good news is, is you really don't have to. Because if you can get good at cold market recruiting, if you can get good at, at Zip Recruiter, like we had Carrie Wysong on last week, I thought she did a fantastic job. This week we've got Ollie Collins that's going to be kind of walking through his system of how he uses Zip Recruiter, cold market recruiting, um, just to, uh, to kind of go through people, go through, go through numbers to find right people. And, uh, and I'm excited about tonight because Ollie and Kelly Collins, they've developed such a cool system, and they've really gotten, they've really gotten a lot of results from it. Um, as a matter of fact, um, may, even, may even be the best in all of Equus at what they do in cold market recruiting. So uh, I'm really excited about really bringing to you uh, his thought process because here's the thing you can plug in via cold market recruiting. Okay, there's Zip Recruiter out there. There are other avenues than, than Zip Recruiter. And yes, are there gobs and gobs of people that are not sharp enough to qualify for a position with you? Probably so. Do you have to weed through some people? Probably so. Ollie's gonna talk about all that stuff tonight. Um, but the truth is, is that it is driving good people to our business because, you know, some of the best field underwriters out there, they came via cold market. So, um, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of just ask Ollie to dive in. And then tonight before, before we hang up, I do have, um, I promised that I would cover my thought process on the ecosystem and why the ecosystem is in place. And do we know exactly what the ecosystem is? Okay, so uh, so I will cover that. Ollie Collins, uh, can you hear me? Okay, I can. Can you hear and see me? I can, man. Thanks so much for plugging in. Absolutely, and uh, good. You're going to say something. Well, I I was going to say, dude. I mean, it's I'm I'm, I'm sitting here. I've got note taking material right here, and I'm looking forward to taking notes tonight because. Man, I just, I want to hear your thought process on ZipRecruiter. Um, you know, it, it, it was not too long ago. You, you didn't just grow up uh, doing ZipRecruiter, um, going through school in Michigan. Okay, so it was, it, was, it was within the last year, I think, that you decided that, hey, I'm, I'm going to take and invest a little bit of money per month. Um, I know you didn't start off as big as you're doing right now, but you started off small, and you developed – kind of a rhythm, so to speak, in mm -hmm. amongst all the things that you have to do um, in your daily life and running a business, you developed a rhythm of talking to people and maybe taking people through a funnel. And lo and behold, you actually had good people come out of that funnel and write applications and continue to write applications and are, and are great writers. So can you just kind of take mm -hmm. some time tonight and just walk through your thought process uh, for the brand new person out there and how they can engage with zip recruiter. Cause Ollie Collins, I'm going to tell you what, I put it on group me a while ago. We're not dreaming. <laughs> a regional manager is now mm -hmm. 10 writing agents a month and we're, we're going to 550 writing agents really, really fast. So that first tier equity bonus is going to be paying $15,000 every 30 days. And so I really want to take cold market recruiting and package it so that the new people, they can say, hey, I can start utilizing that and I can start interviewing mm -hmm. people and start hiring people just like Ollie and Kelly Collins. Yeah, well, I mean, well, just to let you know, um, yeah, I just jumped on uh, Equus and uh, ran a few numbers. Uh, we started last February with ZipRecruiter. 
and I'd say for the first month we were, you know, just kind of figuring our 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 way through some things. Um, to be honest with you, Kelly is like the uh, the the mastermind and the brains behind so much of what we've done with ZipRecruiter. She's taken time, um, spent time with um, the people at ZipRecruiter at conference, numerous amounts of time. Um, she was a bit on the phone with them um, and oftentimes teaching them things about their system that they didn't even know. Um, so uh, she's done a great job with all that. But in the 13, roughly 13 months or so that we've had a ZipRecruiter account, I just went through and looked and personally, this doesn't count anybody on my team that uh, maybe we've dropped some ads for, um, but just personally, uh, we've got 13 unique uh, writing agents uh, from that work. Um, I mean, just, you know, just like the numbers, how the number always, uh, numbers always work. You know, you're going to get a big batch of people, but from that batch of people, you're lucky if you get 25% to 33% of that batch, it's actually going to do something. And you're going to get um, another big chunk of that batch that's just going to fall off the face of the earth and not do anything. And then you're going to get a batch that's going to incubate. And right now we're sitting on about 30 people that are kind of incubating. And incubating, you know, I've got a couple people that have their tests, um, they have their tests uh, scheduled already. Um, I've got a couple people that have passed their tests. They're waiting on their fingerprinting to go through and their background check before they get their license. Um, so we've got some people that, um, you know, we've got a single mom uh, down in Georgia that she passed her pre-licensing class, but the cost to take the exam in Georgia is a little steep, a little bit more than in most states. And so she started a part-time job to, to generate the funds. And she just texted me today um, after the uh, uh, 11 a.m. Um, uh, Monday morning kickoff call and said, you know, hey, I've got the funds now. I'm going to go sign up for my state licensing exam and we're going to get this thing rolling. And so we've got people that are incubating some people that have taken, you know, uh, steps and got things rolling. But I think the big thing that, you know, that anybody wants to know whenever we're, you're talking to people, no matter it's warm market, cold market, zip recruiter, you know, friends and family list or whatever, is how do you go through the people faster to get to the, and not, not um, you know, throw out the baby with the bathwater because you're going through it so fast. Um, but how do you, at the same time, don't spend and waste time with people that obviously aren't interested? You know, how do you read some of those indicators? How do you read some of those signs? You know, one of the things that ZipRecruiter allows is it allows you to post some questions. Um, so Kelly has, has written up an ad. Um, she's got a few different ads. She's got a part-time ad. She's got a full-time ad. She's changed the job description where she's talked about insurance sales and then at other times just sales. Um, and she um, will post the ad in, in areas that I, you know, I tell her, hey, I want to concentrate on this area. Um, and she'll drop, you know, those ads. We've got a zip recruiter account that has got 20, uh, 20 ads. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, depending on if she's dropping for me or, um, or if there's, you know, somebody in our group. And, and I mean, I'll just tell you, this is what we've done for people in our group, you know, because we want to do our best to help, but not handicap. Mm -hmm. We want to do our best to uplift, but not um, make people feel like, you know, we're the welfare state and we're just going to give people um, uh, stuff. Um, so what we've done is, you know, anybody that's been able to go out and personally produce, They've been able to prove that they can go out and they can scratch some paper, they can make some money, um, they can provide, you know, whatever it is they're trying to accomplish. If they're a part-timer, a part-time income, a full-timer, then a nice full-time income. If they've been able to, <clears throat> excuse me, to go out and personally produce and also been able to hire a few people on their own, that they've got enough of, a, of, of credibility in their sphere of influence that they've been able to hire a few people on their own, bring them on board. Hey, whether they get started or not, you know, who knows? I mean, again, that's up to the person that they recruit. But have they believed enough in Equus and the Equus system and, and Barry's vision that, that they've been able to, you know, just out of their excitement, been able to take action and hire people? If the answer to both of those questions are yes, then what we'll do 
is we'll look at an area and we'll, we'll ask them if they're interested in doing some interviewing and we'll drop some ads for them in an area. And then anybody that comes in from those ads, they'll get a chance to interview them and potentially hire them to bring them on board, you know, their team. Um, so we, uh, we've got our 20 ads, uh, 10 are usually in the works for me in some way, shape or form. The other 10 are distributed out amongst uh, a couple of agents. Um, <clears throat> and so the ads are dropped, people read the ad, um, they decide, hey, they want to apply for our job. Well, they've got to go through an ad, well, they don't have to, but we've got some questions there for them. There's some knockout questions. Can you pass a background check? Are you okay with a commission only position? You know, yes, no, or I might be. Um, you know, uh, do you have, are you, um, are you licensed, you know, in this your state? Um, you need to be willing to obtain a state of Michigan, you know, life insurance producers license. Um, what's your driving record like? Do you have reliable transportation? Just some basic questions. And then the one that Kelly really likes, and I do too, is, you know, why should we consider you for this position? And it gives them a chance to say a little something. And a lot of times it gives us a chance to take a look at, is this somebody that we feel like, you know what, the resume doesn't scream at us success, but is there something in there in what they wrote that maybe makes us say, you know what, I just got a gut feeling about this person and I need to give them a chance. And, um, and so they'll apply for the job. Kelly will go in and she will read their resumes. She will read what they wrote. Now she's gotten really fast at it and she's been able to, she's able to kind of skim through and high point some things and, you know, figure out, you know, if this person is worthy of really us going ahead and sending an interview to, you know, you've got to weed out all the people from a cave in Pakistan that are applying and, you know, you've got to weed out, you know, some people that you obviously don't want or, you know, the person that says they can't pass a background check, but if we could just give them, everybody deserves a third chance, you know, so we weed out those people. And then once we weed them out, Kelly rates them. Now, here's the thing, you know, why didn't we start ZipRecruiter earlier? Well, probably, honestly, because it, it took probably a little extra time than I was able to, to put in and to dedicate to it. You know, when you're, when you're in the field and running an agency and living your life and, you know, and trying to squeeze in family time, it's difficult to be able to manage all these things. But that's the thing that Kelly said, Hey, this is the thing that I can, that I can handle, that I can, that I can be in control of. And she's done a fantastic job. So she'll go through and she'll rate the candidates. She rates the candidates, not based on their questions, but she bases, uh, rates them based on their resume. Because what happens is then ZipRecruiter will come through and they'll, they'll look for similarities on other resumes and say, hey, we might have a job for you, Bob Smith, and send them the link to our job posting. And so she'll go through, give them a thumbs up, a thumbs down, or a thumbs neutral. And, uh, and we really have seen by her doing that, um, you know, we've gotten probably a, a little higher quality, a little higher caliber of of agent that uh, has come our way because she's been able to filter things down over time. Um, and so, yes, it takes a little time. Kelly's probably read or screened or cruised, probably pushing 12,000 resumes. Um, and, uh, and she's got um, a, a lot of really funny stories of resumes that she's read. And uh, it's so much so, that she went into a, a local school and, uh, and she talked to the, uh, the eighth, seventh and eighth grade class about applying for jobs and resumes and all this sort of stuff and some do's and don'ts and funny stories that she's found. So, um, but that rating has given us a higher quality of person. Um, she then will send them um, a form email that she set up as a template on ZipRecruiter, you know, uh, hi, John Smith, um, you know, uh, enjoyed your resume. Well, I don't, I don't even know what it says, to be honest with you. But basically, it invites them to set up a time for a 10-minute interview with the owner of Oak Grove Financial, Ollie Collins. We have Equus nowhere on our posting, nowhere on anything does it say Equus Financial. The first time they're going to hear Equus Financial is when I call them for the interview. And... Um, because all you have to do is go and look at the ZipRecruiter sites 
and uh, you'll see that there's a lot of people that say Equus Financial. Um, and I've hired people that said, oh, oh you're, I've, I've interviewed with people from Equus, but I decided not to do anything. Well, you know, they, it, you know there's no qualifications to open up a ZipRecruiter account. And it doesn't mean that somebody can explain the opportunity the way I can. And what I realize is that, you know, it's sometimes it's my ability to connect with somebody, um, to listen to them, to find out what they're looking for, to share the opportunity, to find out, uh, are you an entrepreneur? Are you a business builder? Are you somebody that, you know, is in your, in your 40s and you're starting to realize that your retirement account is nowhere where it needs to be? And you're looking to build something. You're looking for something to hang your hat on to kind of ride you out into the, you know, into the sunset. Um, you know, so sometimes it's that ability to relate to somebody and, and connect with them. Because I'll tell them, and John, you know this, you and I learned this a long time ago. It's never what you do, it's how you do it. But maybe more importantly, who you do it with that makes you successful. And we're looking for just the right people. And I'm looking for somebody that, that you know, I feel like they're a fit for us and they feel like we're a fit for them because ultimately that's where we're going to succeed. And if I feel like I've got to talk somebody into something or I'm convincing them of something, um, then, then, then they're not, it's either they're not, they're not the right person or it's not the right time. And I'll leave the door open, but I'll move on. <coughs> so Kelly will send them an invite to schedule a, um, an interview with me. They will um, uh, have access excuse me, to my Calendly account. And I'll tell Kelly when I'm available for interviews um, and we'll block that time in my calendar. And then those people can then jump in and schedule their, their quick 10 minute interview with me. Um, the interview goes something like this. Um, and, I, and I'm just gonna hit the high points, but it's basically, hey, John, Ollie Collins here from Oak Grove Financial and Equus Financial. I had it in my calendar that we had a quick uh, 10 minute interview scheduled this morning. Do you have a few minutes? You'll say, yeah, and I'll say, John, did you get a chance to do any background work on Oak Grove Financial or our parent company, Equus Financial? And you're either going to say yes or no, and it doesn't bother me either way, because honestly, a lot of these people got the email sent to them from ZipRecruiter, and they're like, oh, okay, if you think it's a good fit ZipRecruiter, I'll apply, and they haven't had time to dig. Some of them have watched, you know, 37 videos from 37 companies, and they are like, oh, I, I did, but can you remind me of what you guys do? And I, I try not to take offense to that because goodness gracious, I mean, I get off the phone after a day's worth of interviews. And if I don't take good notes, somebody could call me back and I'm scratching my head trying to figure out who it was I just talked to. And, uh, and so have you ever had a client call you and they're like, Hey, John, this is Mary. And you're like, shoot. Okay. So that's half of my clients, you know? And, um, and so anyway, I, um, uh, and then, I, you know, I'll, I'll give them just a quick overview of Equus. Financial services firm, three years old, 30 million our second year, 40 million this year. This is, these are the areas that we work in. Um, does that sound like something that would interest you? Um, if, I have, uh, if I have their questionnaire in front of me, I'll see how they've answered the question, especially about commission only. Because what I've realized is that a lot of times people will say, that they would be, they would consider a commission only position when in all actuality, they're just kind of hoping maybe they can talk you into a salary. And, uh, and so if I see that, yes, they would, you know, maybe they would consider, then I'll ask them up front. I'll just say, hey, listen, I, you know, I, I see you answered it this way. I just wanted to let you know that this is a commission only position. And um, so before we go any farther, I just need to know if that's a deal breaker for you. And, uh, and if they say it is, then we're, we're good, <laughs> you know? And I tell them best of luck to them in their job search and, and we move on. Um, but if it sounds like a position that they might be interested in, and one of the things I talk to them about is about a management opportunity, is about moving into and owning your own agency, just like the local state farm agent. Because one of the things that, you know, I always have to remember is that these people, you know, for whatever, wh whatever's happened in their life, they're looking for a job. It might be a second job. It might be a main job. I spoke to a young lady and, um, and she's had 26 years at the same career, um, college graduate, um, was an executive um, for a fast food chain and just jumped ship and went into the, the franchising end where she's managing stores for a franchisee. And, um, 
uh, and it's not what she thought it was going to be. And she's looking for a change. And, um, and so, um, anyway, so I'm sorry. I just, I just, I just had a brain fart there. My mind went like five directions all at the same time. And, uh, so, um, you know, so I'll, I'll tell them, you know, it's kind of like, um, the local state farm guy, you know, when he hires somebody and he trains them, they get the big money and he gets a little bit of money every time they go out there and they sell a policy. And I try to explain that concept to them enough so that they realize that even though they were looking for a job, there might be something more here for them than just that. You know, Barry talks about us not being able to grow our business, um, you know, a purely cold market. And I totally agree. My reason for going cold market is to hire you, connect with you, develop enough trust and belief in, in us and in the ecosystem that we can then talk to your warm market and really look at that multiplication, really look at that explosive growth, because you believe so much in what we do that you share that with some other people. And so, you know, by going cold market to get to warm market, I like to make sure I set something out there and tell them that there is an opportunity to grow and expand a business here. You know, and that's one of the reasons that I selected Equus was because of some of the bonuses that they have as you, as you reach certain levels of management where some of these bonuses can dramatically replenish a retirement account that maybe is nowhere close to where it needs to be. And, and I plant that seed. And then, but I'll ask them, I'm, I'm, I'll ask them about them, you know, and I'll tell me about you. What's kind of led you to, you to this place where you're looking for something? What's your background in? Have you ever owned a business? I had a guy today that he works in sales, but he owned a business for a while and um, did a, you know, DJ wedding planning, the whole nine yards. And we talked about that entrepreneurial spirit, you know? And so um, that, you know, those are some of the things that I look for whenever I'm talking to somebody. Um, and then, you know, I just feel like, you know, I've, I've rushed people through to get an ICA right away. Um, I, I feel like if I was on the receiving end, I would probably want to, you know, look at a few more pieces of information. Doesn't mean I'm discounting what you're doing. I just, I would just like to look at something and learn a little bit more and make sure that I'm making an informed decision. I mean, this is our first you know, 10 minute phone interview, you know, I'd like to gain a little bit more information and maybe come back to you with some questions if I was a candidate. And so I try to extend that same opportunity to somebody else. And what I say is, hey, listen, I've enjoyed the conversation. What I'd like to do is to send you a link to our website and send you a few videos to check out um, and schedule a time for us to get together for a follow up. Now, listen, if you have any questions, jot them down. I'll be glad to answer any questions that you have. Um, and, um, and I may have a few more myself whenever we get back together and talk. And then before I send them anything, I book the inner, the follow up and I say, what's your schedule looking like? I'll pull up my calendar tomorrow at such and such time. You know, I'll block out about, you know, 15 to 30 minutes for us to talk because uh, sometimes people have a lot of questions. Um, and, um, uh, and then, you know, I'll let you know what next steps are if we decide to take them. Um, okay. How many people keep the follow up interview? probably just over 50%, you know? Um, I had a guy that uh, I just hired that um, no showed me for a follow-up and I just got a standard text that goes into my phone and I fired it over to him and he texted me right back and he said, I'm so sorry, we had an emergency come up. Can we reschedule to the first of, which was, you know, this week, which was today. And I said, absolutely. How, what such and such time look like? And I followed up with him today you know, and we're bringing them on board. I mean, the thing, I understand that life happens. I'm not trying to be a hard, you know what. Um, and, um, uh, you know, I just, you know, I just know that the first time you and I talked about Equus, it wasn't the right time for me, you know? And so sometimes it's not the right time. Maybe it's the not, not the right time by a couple of months. Maybe it's not the right time by a day or two, you know? And so I don't, I don't chase people, you know, um, anything that I, you know, saying a text message, I maintain control of the situation. Um, but I just figure, hey, what's a quick text message out to somebody that says, hey, I had a schedule for a follow-up interview today. Um, I was not able to reach you. If we need to reschedule this interview, um, you know, give me a shout back. And uh, so anyway, um, yeah. And then, you know, we just pretty much get them started after that, you know, kind of like Carrie Wysong, 
you know, I know that one of the things that I think a lot of the managers are, are trying to, to streamline and get even better at is getting somebody started efficiently and effectively. Uh, that's stuff that we're working on too. Um, and, um, uh, but, you know, just like the people on the call today with Barry and Rob, you know, the people that um, are excited and ready to roll um, are doing just that. You know, I've got an agent um, in Illinois who, you know, in a very short period of time, you know, got his license, came on, you know, came on board, got his license, you know, studied, you spent a little time on the phone with him the other day. He's not only written, you know, eight applications, um, he's hired like three or four people. He's got people in class. And I've got people that I first talked to last February, March, that are still in that incubation category. You know, it is what it is. You know, it is what it is. Um, so, but those are the people that I'm looking for. And I read some notes today um, that I took from Barry, and he said, um, pull the ones across the finish line that are closest to the finish line. And, and that's one of the things that I'm trying to make sure I do. The ones that are closest to the finish line, they're the ones I'm trying to pull over, whether it's pulling them over to, hey, let's get, your, your, get you in class, let's get you contracted, let's get you trained, let's get you out in the field, um, let's get you building, um, you know, and, and the ones that, that I have a heart for, the ones that, that I want it for them, I just got to be careful that I don't want it more for them than they want it for themselves because, um, that's going to, um, um, you know, cause all of us to struggle, <laughs> you know, uh, we definitely want, want to help the ones that want to help themselves, you know, but you know, one of the things though, the Equus system is absolutely the best place to incubate that I've ever seen. There's videos, there's webinars, there's conference calls, there's training, there's group me. It's a great place for somebody to figure out what they need to figure out, get their feet up underneath them. And then when they're ready to hit the ground running, we're here for them. You know, today before the conference call that we've got a team call in the morning and then we've got the, you know, the 11 o'clock call and I literally shot out. I mean, I could go through and count, but it was probably, probably 20 to 30 minutes. I, I just firing out text messages and it, you know, and it's got, had, had my call, the 11 o'clock call. And then this, this call tonight, I had it all on there and I shot it out to a ton of people um, because I want to, I want to promote the system. And you know what? And there's a lot of incubators I shot it out to. It's just a copy and paste, you know, but I've had a few of them plug in. And I had a guy in Pennsylvania today that, that said, hey, I was on that call and I'm going to be on the 11 o'clock one too, you know. So anyway, that's, uh, you know, kind of our overview, you know, in a nutshell. I'm sure that there's, you know, some questions you have. Well, the, the thing that I want to ask you, Ali, is, and this is this is maybe one of those things that, and I, I don't I don't want people to think that I'm being a, a hard butt, but you know, Ollie, not everybody says the same things, which I don't think they need to say the same things, but um, because it's it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Um, but you know, communicating equus, I mean, we we we. We have to be excited, but we can't be jumping up and down. Right. We have to be bold, but we can't be like, um, we can't turn people off because they think we're arrogant. Um, what are some of the things uh, out of all the interviews that you've done? I mean, what, what's kind of been kind of developed as far as your mindset on making sure that as you're communicating Equus Financial, that you are giving people the opportunity to respond to you and how you're communicating. You know, when I, um, when I go over that brief overview, I mean, it really is a 30,000 foot overview. I mean, it's like, here's Equus big picture, big bullet point. Does that sound like something you might be interested in? And if they say yes, and I start digging into them, tell me a little bit about your background, your experiences. You know, maybe I have the resume pulled up in front of me. Um, you know, if I just, if it happens to be a morning, you know, interview and, and I'm in front of my tablet or something. Um, uh, but I'll, but if I don't, I'll just say, Hey, listen, you know, my wife reads all the resumes. She decides who gets the interviews and who doesn't. Um, she's the smarter one of the two of us. And so, you know, so the fact that you got an interview is a good thing. Um, um, but tell me a little bit about you and, and I'm looking for, and I'll ask them questions because I'm looking for, am I going to go left? 
Am I interviewing a personal producer? Am I interviewing somebody that just needs to go out and make some money to provide for their family, to get out from behind the eight ball financially, you know, to get a little breathing room? Or, or am I hiring somebody that, yeah, they want to make some money, but man, they're looking for an opportunity. And man, if this could be something more than just sales, then that would fire them up. And maybe their background is telling me that. Maybe their background, you know, I had a young lady we interviewed, oh yeah, my whole family's entrepreneurs, you know, and she starts laying it out to us what her family has done. And so with that being the case, then when I'm going to explain who Equus is, I'm going to bring it from a little bit more of a business builder standpoint. You know, what was I looking for when I joined Equus? I was looking for a training system. I was looking for leadership. I was looking for, you know, um, uh, somebody who was in it for the long haul. You know, I, I, I would start to cater a little bit more towards those hot button things that, you know, is what you're looking for. Now, I'm not trying to sell you on it, but there's no sense in me talking to you about building when you just want to go out and make another $500 a week. That's you right. know, I mean, it doesn't mean I'm not going to mention it that there's an opportunity, you know, hey, listen, I told somebody the other day, listen, we're looking for people in your area and, and I'm going to find them. Um, they might as well just be people, you know, and then we could bring them on board your team, you know? And so, um, but if they're just want to personally produce, well, that's okay. Maybe they'll catch the dream later on. Maybe they'll come to an Evo meeting and they'll see a bigger picture. Maybe they'll sit in on one of your, your, your zoom meetings on a Monday and start to get I, the idea that, you know what? I'm doing okay at this thing. I bet you I could hire some people and go sales manager, you know? And so I'll take them down one or two paths really based on, as I peel that onion back a little bit about them, where it takes me and where it leads me. Okay, Ollie. So this is, this is, I think the million dollar question and, you know, we can kind of close up tonight talking about this, but, um, <clears throat> And it, and it kind of goes hand in hand with, with the Equus financial system. But once you, I mean, you, you've got a great track record of using ZipRecruiter to find good people and turn them into to unique writers. I was just, I, I was pulling up some numbers and um, let's see here. So I've got Ollie Collins at, um, you, you had 27 people I think if, if my number's right, you had 27 agents get paid last month. So in February, in February, Ollie and Kelly Collins had 27. That only takes 10 to be a regional manager. Um, and so, you know, you're, 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 you're double RM, man. You know, 27 agents got paid last month. And so, um, Ollie, what's your mindset? I, if there's one thing that you do that I absolutely admire is that you don't smother people. You're getting started process. It doesn't seem like it's overbearing where, you know, you're that coach that's, you know, you know, kind of like demanding and make you, you probably rely more on the Equus system and the training center uh, all the, the plethora of information that we have on our on our uh, phone apps, you know, you you probably do a much better job at relying on that than I do because I find myself if I if they ask me the question, I'm going to answer it. But when they ask you the question, you're you're actually a little bit better than I am, and you're stronger than I am, and you say, "Hey, there's go look it up." Because when you look it up and you find the answer, you're going to now know how to teach other people how to find the answer. So, Ollie, how, how are you getting people started? <laughs> you know, uh, it's funny you say that that's, a, that's a, a, a strength of mine because that's something that I just I feel like I got to get better at, you know. Um, because I think by nature, you know, we like to help people. You know, you don't get into this industry – you know, not only the insurance industry, but, you know, the, the, the team building, you know, industry, you don't get into something like this if you don't got a heart for people. And right. that means you always want to help people. Um, but there's a fine line between helping and handicapping. And I can't do so much for you that I'm your first stop along the way to get an answer. Because you know what, what if something happens to me? 
then you can't get the information you need, you know, and you come to a screeching halt. I don't want to be that important to somebody. I don't want to be the system. I want the system to be the system. I'm a piece of that. I'm your tour guide. I'll be the one that'll show you, you know, hey, listen, there's a lot of videos in the back office. Don't worry about watching the F and G, you know, illustrating an IUL, you know, webinar right now that Bill Martin did because um, it's, it's not, um, that's more of an advanced and you're not there yet. Watch these videos, you know, listen to this webinar. Let me send you the link to the new agent Dropbox to get you the information that you need. We've got insurance carriers and we have Equus and then you've got an upline. And so many of your answers can come from the insurance carriers and from Equus. Um, I didn't want to wear you out, John, and I didn't want to wear out, you know, Bill or Rob or, or Barry asking them questions that I could get the answer to um, from the back office, from an email or a chat over to Equus, or a quick phone call to the carriers, um, or, uh, or a message out on GroupMe and let, let that collective intelligence help me out. So as far as getting a new person started, um, they passed their test, congratulate them. Uh, I don't add people to group me until they've passed their licensing exam. I've had people that have gotten on group me and in the middle of their class have freaked when they've seen, you know, all of the health conditions and the, and the challenges and what do we, and the underwriting. And it's a little overwhelming for them um, because they're looking, you know, they're looking at mile 15 and they're at mile three in a marathon. And they're like, oh my gosh, how am I ever going to get there? And so, um, uh, so once I pass their test, then I add them to group me. Um, after I add them to group me, I fire over right away um, the new agent Dropbox link that's got the webinars and the videos and everything in them. And I say, watch the, watch the webinars, learn how to make phone calls first, watch the videos, learn how to do uh, an in-home presentation. There's even information in there about product selection. You know, let's, let's pick a couple of carriers for you let's pick gpm and and if you've got e and o insurance let's pick americo if not let's maybe look at cfg and and uh, um and uh or i'm sorry foresters and uh, gpm and then get you great western and away you go you don't need to be bogged down with everything and one of the big things is you know um i remember i had an agent that that said well i, I can't i can't get put somebody in that product because that's not the best product for them and I said, so what'd you do? Well, I went with this fully underwritten plan. And I said, okay. I said, how do you know that was the best plan for me? Said, well, because it was the best one we had. Well, there's over 600 insurance companies that are licensed here in the state of Michigan or something crazy like that. Are you sure it's the best one? I mean, if we're going to do the best, let's do the best. And I like to operate underneath the, let's just leave them better off than we found them. Right. You know, and we can always circle back later like Andrew did. And so if I can find just a few, uh, a few carriers for my agent, help them get their bags situated, make sure that they've got access to the paper apps or the e-apps they need, make sure they've got access to the cheat sheets that they need, make sure that they understand the in-home process. That's one of the things that I think scares people is how do I select the product? It's like if you understand the in-home process, and you go through the process and you collect the information when you're supposed to collect the information, then the information will then tell, not you, because you're too new. It'll tell your, your hiring manager, your upline, or agent concierge. It'll, it'll tell them what product to recommend for you and for your client. And then you're going to start to learn. And you're going to get really good at those two or three carriers. And then as situation you know, requires it, then we'll add on a few of the ancillary carrier carriers because, oh, you've got a really unique health situation and we've got one carrier that takes them. Time for us to explain this one new carrier to you. Um, do you have, remember I told you to have a paper app of all the carriers with you? Go grab that paper app from Royal Neighbors. We're going to get ready to do a Royal Neighbors app or whatever, you know. And so um, I try to keep it simple. Um, mostly what I've realized is that, um, I can't grab you by the hand and pull you through this. You got to want to get through it. And if you get through it and you do your studying and you do your due diligence and you're excited to get in the field, then I almost can't mess you up. 
You know, you can't say enough of the wrong things to the right person to turn them away. You can't say enough of the, the, um, the right things to the wrong person to fire them up and get them through the process quicker than they want to get through it. Um, and I think understanding that and loving everybody where they're at, it kind of takes the, the burden off my shoulders because now your success or failure isn't predicated on how quickly I can move you through the system. It's based on how quickly you move through the system. Now, Ali, you, you made reference to um, this Dropbox. And um, you, it, it's now called the famous Ali Collins Dropbox. But when you, you, you've actually been, you've been creating this Dropbox since you got started with Equus. Can you, two things, can you, do you mind giving people access to the Dropbox? Oh, yeah. and can you let people know kind of your mindset for how you created it? So, well, when I talk about the new agent um, Dropbox, that's actually something that Equus set up. And Bill Martin put a folder together. It's called the New Agent Startup. And I'll post that on, on GroupMe. And in there, it's got webinars. It's got a folder that says webinars, a folder that says conference calls, and a folder that says something else I remember. And Bill recommends you start with the webinar one because those are the ones that are going to talk about how to make a phone call. Um, and go through all the webinar ones and go through the videos that have um, uh, uh, present about the presentation. The Dropbox that I have, um, you know, I just, I felt like when I was out in the field, I wanted to be able to get my hands on something quickly. Um, I didn't necessarily, you know, Equus is so much more phenomenal than, you know, I think we ever dreamed and imagined it would be. I mean, there's so many resources available to us. Um, but I just, um, you know, had kind of built up a Dropbox. It's got everything in there from, you know, stuff about annuities to um, a miscellaneous file that's got, you know, all the height weight charts in it. It's got different client worksheets. I mean, there's a, I got probably four or five different client worksheets in there. You know, which one should you use? I don't care. <laughs> you know, use the one you want to use, you know, and if you use it for a while and you don't like it and start to modify it, then look at what we else we have in there. And, if you see some, excuse me, something that you like, then take it and modify it and print a bunch of them off or keep them on your tablet. Use whatever worksheet you want. You know, I've got an existing policy checklist because I know that I found when I was in a house, doggone it, after being on hold for 20 minutes, I'd get them on the phone and then I'd end up hanging up with the carrier and there'd be a question I forgot to ask. And then I'd got to call them back and go through the whole process again. So I put an existing client, or excuse me, existing policy worksheet together. It takes me right through what questions do I need to ask when I'm on the phone with a carrier. I mean, I, call, I had to call New York Life today about a New York Life AARP policy, and I went right down the list. You know, now some of the questions don't pertain based whether it's a term policy or a whole life or a UL, you know, but if I read through them in my head and then read out loud the ones that are pertinent to the situation, I know that I'm not going to forget to ask, is there a loan on the policy, you know? Um, What's the monthly payment? When does it draft? You know, um, questions about an IUL. You know, if they continue to make the payment the way they have been, when will this policy cancel on them? You know, so um, that Dropbox has got all that kind of stuff in there. It's got some audio links in there, maybe to, you know, a recording on a conference call or, um, you know, maybe a, a, an in-person training. Somebody did a you know, talked about, you know, their phone call or how they do a presentation or Chris Kinsman talking at Raleigh, how she shows price and does her presentation. And, you know, I might have videos and links and stuff like that in there. So yeah, I'll share that on Dropbox. I'll share a link so that if people don't have Dropbox, um, they don't, because it's, my Dropbox is really big. And if, and if they have Dropbox, uh, it'll, it'll fill their Dropbox right up. But if I just share the link, um, then they can uh, check everything out and not have to worry about, you know, purchasing extra space on Dropbox. Well, you, you mentioned about you can't say enough wrong things to the right person. You can't say enough right things to the wrong person. You know, when you look at the Equus system, I think, I think our mindset for getting new people started um, is exactly what you're doing because you're leading people to information. And I think, you know, when you look at the Equus system and how it starts off with the Monday morning kickoff call, uh, and then we've got the Wednesday webinar, we've got the Friday national sales call, we got the, the 
you know, they've got the leaders call for agency builders on Friday afternoon, and then we've got live dials with Bill Martin. So, you know, I think if there's one thing that we can all get better at that'll be the most effective at moving people into the process of, of getting paid, into the process of making anything good happen, it, it's not going to necessarily be the how-to. Um, it, it's going to be people, and I know we, we've mentioned this a few times, people that take possession of their own mind. You know, people that see this opportunity and they go, wow, so this opportunity, I can create more of the right circumstances. I can make more money. I can maybe get some more time. Instead of working five days a week, maybe I can go make more money working three days a week. So whatever the desired circumstances are, we offer people the opportunity, like, like if, if, if we're going to go for it, then we, we've got to limit the amount of time that we have negative thoughts come into our brain because if we're not careful, fear and doubt will try to bombard me because it doesn't necessarily want me to move forward. And so the more I can keep my mind focused on moving forward, the more I can plug into that new agent starter pack, the more I can plug into the Monday morning kickoff call, to the Tuesday morning leaders call, your team call, Mike Hall's got a team call that he actually does on 8 o'clock on Monday nights. Your team call is at 9 o'clock on, I think it's 9 o'clock, 9 or 10 o'clock on Monday mornings, right? And um, so all of these calls, it's, if, if you think it's how to, then you'll miss it. Mm -hmm. y yes, we talk about some how to, but a lot of it is just to help manage your thought process to help you along in making sure you're taking possession of your own mind. And because the thing about it is, is that's moving forward. The more we think mm -hmm. about something, the more we move forward. I, I, I know even now, Ollie, I don't play professional golf anymore, but I still want to get better at golf. And so sometimes it's hard for me because it's easy for me to sit there. I, I can watch 50 YouTubes a day on the golf swing, and I can develop things in my mind that I can't wait to try next time I get out to the driving range, right? Well, it's the same thing in the home. I can sit there and watch Bill Martin. I can watch Chris Tinsman or Andrew Pappas or Tyler Bosch. And I can go, man, I can't wait to try this in the next home I'm in. So mm -hmm. any, any closing comments on that? You know, um, I, need, I need you, new person, I need you to fall in love with the culture here. And so I have to do everything I can to promote the culture and, and every opportunity for you to fall in love with it until you tell me uh, – like I had somebody today, I texted them and they said, Hey, thanks for the text. I also sent this over to so-and-so that they had just hired and I was sending it to that person too. So I know this person's got it now that, that they're sending messages on their own to their downline. They love they're they're in love with the culture here. They're in love with who we are and what we do. That association is so important. Barry talks about being a gym rat. You know, a gym rat is somebody who's sitting on a, on a Zoom at 1017 on a Monday night, and they're like, this is cool stuff, <laughs> you know? And, 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 and they just, they want more. Um, I need you, new person. And so I, and when I'm talking to somebody, whether I just interviewed them, just ICA them, no matter what stage in the process, I want you to get an opportunity to kind of get a look behind the curtain. I want to give you an opportunity to kick the tires, to get a feel for who we are as a company, because it's never what you do, it's how you do it and who you do it with. And I had an agent that Kelly and I hired that told me, he said, hey, the reason why I wanted my wife to meet you and Kelly is because I just had a really good feeling after coming to a conference and, and, and meeting everybody. And I wanted to see, I wanted to ask her, I wanted her to see, are these the people we want to do life with? And I thought that was really powerful when he said that to me, because you know, it really just drilled into me how important the culture is. And so it's my job when I bring somebody on board to get them into the Equus system, to get them on a webinar, to get them on a conference call, to get them on a Friday call to hear Barry and Rob, to he get them on a Monday call, to get them to an Ebo meeting, to get them to a training when Barry comes to town, 
to get the, to get them to the conference. It's my job to get them around the culture until I see that they've fallen in love with it. And then they don't need me to do that for them anymore. And I can go do that for some other people, you know? So, I mean, that's, that's what I see about the Equus system. My role is tour guide and my role is, is to get you to the system. You know, you and I had learned this a long time ago and I, and I, and I remind myself constantly and it's don't try to go too far with too few. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, there was a guy by the name of Rocky and you and I you knew from a long time ago and somebody had asked him the question, if you had it to do all over again, what would you do different? And he said, I would hire more people and I would have helped them less. Because what I realized is that the people that really wanted it and the people that really wanted to get after it would go and do that. And the people that I helped the less, if that's proper English, the people that I helped the least, um, they're the strongest organizations I have now and so um, I just try to love them where they're at but I don't stop looking for new people to introduce to the ecosystem love it well I think we're uh, Brad is there any I don't know if you can see any questions or whatever um, not sure if there are any questions but um, is it okay, Brad, if we sign off? Or I mean, I don't want to leave a lot of people ill if they're if they're asking questions and I just can't see it. No, sir. Um, n- nothing in the chat right now. No, sir. Okay. Well, Ollie Collins, thank you so much, and um, <clears throat> let's let's continue this this conversation. Um, and Brad, uh, are we able to get? I see that you're on and Ollie's on and I'm on. Are we able to get? Can, can we pull Mike Hall on maybe next week and do kind of a a three-way uh, round robin with me and Ollie and Mike? Absolutely. I can make – so we got 31 people on right now. I can make any one of them available to talk just like you and Ollie are. Well, I love it. I, I, I think that would be great. And uh, I want to continue on. I want to continue on this theme of cold market recruiting because, I, you know, not everybody's going to go meet their waiter or waitress. Not everybody's going to go and meet somebody new. Not everybody's going to call their warm market. But I think everybody, if they want to grow, I think everybody can tap into cold market, some type of cold market recruiting, and they can make it work for them. Ollie and Kelly Collins, you've certainly made it work for you. Very, very proud of you guys. Uh, way to kick butt. What, just what an awesome organization you guys have. So with that, guys, good night, and I'll see you all tomorrow morning. If I can give tomorrow morning a commercial, um, we're going to have some fun. Um, we're, we're just, l- listen, tomorrow morning, is, it's going to be a quick call, but we're just going to do some shout outs. We're going to do some recognition and um, just a lot of good things happen in February. The momentum that this team has going into March is momentum like we've never experienced before. So, uh, so tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock Eastern time, uh, be sure to plug into our Tuesday morning leaders call and, um, and then we'll see you then. Thanks, guys. God bless.